everyone, today I'm talking about three-year-old and tonsillectomies. So my daughter Natalie just had a tonsillectomy, an adenoidectomy, and another set of ear tubes put in. She is about just a month shy of three and a half, and the doctors have been talking about this for about four months or so. It's just taken a while to get everything kind of set and scheduled and then waiting for the appointment, waiting for the doctor to be back from vacation. But we finally got it done and she had it done last Wednesday, which is exactly a week from today. So the full recovery time is supposed to be two weeks and she's only a week into it, but she's doing really quite well. So I wanted to do kind of a weekend one weekend <laughs> to the tonsillectomy recovery um, and just kind of let you know how she's doing and let you know how the process was and all that sort of thing. So Natalie has had ear issues and nose issues. She snored. So it was really no surprise to us whenever we started having multiple people, including her dentist, say that she really needed to get her tonsils out because they were way too big. So we went to our ENT. We actually ended up switching ENTs throughout this whole process just because we wanted a certain facility for her to have it done at. Um, but we went to the ENT that my husband had been to before and absolutely loved the switch. We had a great experience with the office and then also the facility that we chose. And she had an outpatient, oh, I can't talk today. She had an outpatient surgery at the hospital and the ENT did the procedure and everything. She was there for about five or six hours that morning and then we got to take her home. So she is supposed to have a two-week recovery period where she eases into what kind of food she eats, what kind of activity she does, and the full-time length is two weeks, basically. So to start out, the process, after we got it all scheduled and everything and showed up for the first day, we took her up to the outpatient area, they got her all prepped, and then we kind of walked her to the OR doors and they took her back. We waited for about 30 or 45 minutes and the doctor came out, told us everything went great, and then we waited for her to come out of the recovery and go to her main recovery room. We were probably in the recovery room for about two or three hours. So total time we were at the hospital was probably five to six hours because we sat and waited at the beginning for probably about an hour and a half or almost two hours before they took her back to the OR. So it wasn't too long of a time period. And then she, of course, had the anesthesia. She was under the anesthesia general or whatever you would call it. Um, and so she was groggy and she just wanted to sleep whenever she came out and was in recovery. So that was kind of nice. I was prepping myself and anticipating that she made us be screaming because actually when she had her tubes in when she was 22 months old uh, it was a different facility a different doctor it was probably just her age that was different she came out from underneath the anesthesia and she was just screaming 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 and it was like horrific for probably like a good 30 40 minutes I couldn't do anything to calm her down she's just screaming and I think that probably had a large part to do with their age. Now she was older, I could tell her a little bit, you know, she's three and a half, so she gets some of it, some of it she doesn't get. We could tell her, you know, it's gonna feel funny, but mommy and daddy will be there when you wake up. And so we kind of were able to prep her that way. But she just really wanted to sleep. So in the recovery room, she slept. The nurse made sure she could keep down some liquid and everything, and then we were able to bring her home. So the majority of the first day, she just wanted to sleep, which worked out fine for me. Um, and then the next day, she was up and about a little bit, and actually more than I even anticipated. And she, by day two and three, was maybe for like 15, 20 minutes of the day going to the princess dress area and rooting around for her dress and putting it on, which was super encouraging for me because... You know, I read some like serious horror stories, especially for adults. I think it's a really hard recovery. So she was really starting to feel better by day two, three, four. She would still have bouts where, especially when the painkillers would start to wear off, that and then she was ready for her next dose, she would start to get fussy and cranky, and you could look at the clock and be like, okay, it's almost time for her next dose. But I was actually surprised also, either because of her age or just her doctor's office, they don't prescribe any prescription painkillers. They just use over-the-counter. So since she's been home, we've just been alternating every three hours ibuprofen, baby ibuprofen, and baby acetaminophen, or children's acetaminophen. So we just alternated the acetaminophen with the ibuprofen, and that seemed to work actually really well for her. But about the second or third day, I started looking at recovery stories online to kind of compare and kind of see, like, you know, how she was doing, what I should expect, and all that sort of thing. The majority of the stories were, of course, from adults because three-year-olds aren't getting online and writing all their stories, which I didn't think about that part. 
But when I started like reading some of the adult stories, it sounded horrific. Like people were like, I'm on her Percocet and it's still horrible. And so it definitely seems like it's a much harder recovery for adults. And even some kids can have a rougher time. A knock on wood, I think we're doing okay. I think she's having a fairly easy time of it. So tonsils, they seem sore, but she also seems relieved because they were so big. It almost seems like she can breathe better. And she's not really verbalizing any of this to me. I just have to kind of go off her body cues. I can definitely tell her throat is sore, of course. And the first couple of days, she liked popsicles and ice cream. But by about day three and four, she was like, whatever, I'm over that. And she started asking for like regular food, like crackers and uh, cereal she really likes. So of course I'm kind of trepidatious because they're not really supposed to have anything hard that soon. So what I would do is I would like soak cereal and milk to where it was soggy and then I would give her cereal that way and she ate a lot of yogurt and things like that. Now at a week out I'm giving her easy to mush up food like food you'd give to babies like Cheerios and goldfish stuff like that that still doesn't have any hard edges but she's wanting solid foods. Like that's all she wants to eat. She's pretty much over, we had a fudge bar today, but she's pretty much over like the all soft, cold, liquid diet. The scab hasn't come off yet, so that may, once that comes off, it may be a whole nother stage. So maybe I'll do another video on that. Um, but really I'd say day three to four were about her worst, and that's also what a number of people with kids that had tonsillectomies had said. So I'd say around day three was probably like our worst quote unquote day where she just really didn't feel great that day but then she started feeling better after that and that was probably about the same. I had a number of people comment that had children that had tonsillectomies and they also said around day three to four would probably be about the worst and then they'd start getting better from there. I also concur with that. That's pretty much how it was for Natalie. And then by day four, she was kind of had spurts where she felt good enough where she actually asked me. I had enough stuff stocked that we didn't have to go anywhere for basically like a week and a half other than I might have to go out and get some like fresh groceries. But I didn't, wasn't anticipating we would like go out that quick. I had my dad here to help with Bella and get her back to, back and forth to school. And by day four, which I can't think of what day of the week that was, I guess Saturday, Bella and my husband were off. Um, at a Jeep thing and so Natalie and I were here and Natalie was asking I want to go to Target I want to go to Target and I'm like what do you need at Target what could you possibly need at Target she said I want to go to Target and get a mystery mini the little frozen characters so I said okay fine you've been doing really good as far as you know your recovery and just being good about taking your medicine you're hanging in there you're a trooper so I took her to Target and that was our first outing so that was day four after the tonsillectomy and then every day since then she's just kept feeling better and better to where like today she really hasn't taken any naps she's just running around playing so a week out she's not showing very many symptoms except the one thing that I would say if they're having a tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy and the ear tubes put in all at one time um, there's no really no issue of having them all put in one time um, I'd say the tonsillectomy is what's making her throat sore. She actually had the most drainage in her nose area, which is probably because she was really stuffed up. She's go through these cycles of being on antibiotics, being clear for four or five days, and then starting right up with like another sinus infection or another congestion thing. Well, uh, she couldn't have any sort of medicine seven days before. No allergy medicine, nothing. So by the time that that seven days was up and it was her surgery day, she was so congested. She had just so much clogged up in there um, that she had a lot of drainage and a lot of, you know, strippage and things like that um, the days right after her surgery. And you can probably hear we've all had cold and congestion because the weather's hot, it's cold, it's hot, it's cold. So um, the couple days right after her surgeries she had a lot of drainage especially from the nose area and so then I think because of that agitation she did have a few nosebleeds I think about day two day two or day three and they were quick they were you know stopped really quickly and it was pretty soon after she had the surgery so it wasn't anything that was like super alarmed but it was something I kept an eye on where if it started bleeding and it was a lot or started bleeding and went stop I'd obviously have to take her to the doctor or call the doctor or something um, but they were just little quick short nosebleeds that's one thing that did happen in the adenoid area her nose is cleared up a little bit now a lot of that drainage just stopped and she can take her allergy medicine now, um, so that helps, I think, too. And then the other thing that we've had happen 
we didn't have any problems after she had her first sets of tubes and just today, it's actually my vlog, The Day in the Life also, she actually had some drainage come out of her ear, which I was concerned about at first because I was like, it's a week afterwards. Like she hasn't had anything like this since like the first day there was maybe like a little encrustation, but like this was like actual drainage and I'm like, is this supposed to happen like a week afterwards? So I did call the office, I did talk to a nurse and she said because she had the tonsillectomy, the adenoidectomy and the ear tubes put in all at one time, a lot of that drainage in there, especially after I told her she had a lot of the drainage in the nose area, she said because, you know, there's holes in there, everything's kind of connected, so that drainage from the adenoid area can go into the ears and then come out that way. So, um, it was like brown, a little bit thicker than like a fluid. There was some clear fluid also, but kind of an, almost like a mucus-y type stuff. Sorry, this is gross. But, um, just coming out of her left ear. And the nurse said it was probably attributed to uh, the adenoid area and things that were left up there from, you know, just the agitation and the congestion and the nosebleeds and all that. So anyhow, those are the really only like outward things that we've had and that's pretty minor actually. So, so far so good. Um, we still have another week of recovery to go. She's still not supposed to be doing anything like going to playgrounds or anything like that, which luckily it's like 45 degrees here. Actually, it's not even 40. It's like 30, high 30s today. So it got cold here again, so we're really not missing out on anything. Um, she's not supposed to be going to playgrounds, you know, no running, no jumping, no sliding, no overexerting herself because they just really don't want any, like, excessive bleeding, obviously. And as far as returning to activities, about two weeks. Now I'm kind of up in the air as far as whether or not she'll go to school. Her school day would be about a week and a half after surgery. And... She doesn't have any, like, physical activity that she'll be doing that day. So it's kind of up in the air if she'll go that day or not. She's doing really well, so I'm kind of torn right now as far as whether or not she's going to go. She's saying she wants to go, um, but I don't know yet. So I'll fill you in if I do, like, a two-week out and let you know what we did about that. Um, also, potty training. I wanted to talk a little bit about the tonsillectomy and three-year-old and potty training. Because uh, Natalie was basically potty trained just a little bit after she turned three. And then she started in with all these sinus infections, the congestion areas, and her tonsils were enlarged over and over and over. And that was basically about three or four cycles of she would get the infection, we'd go to the doctor, they prescribe antibiotics. She'd be on that for like 10 days. It would clear up. She'd be clear for four or five days, and it would start in and start all over again. So that was literally a cycle for about two months where we would just go, get the antibiotics, she'd clear up, she'd be fine four or five days and start over again, and then it's just a whole other cycle. So the, then the problem started that the antibiotics that they were prescribing her went straight through her, if you know what I mean, and it was not something at that point in time where, like, I think a four or five-year-old that had been potty trained for a while could have probably handled it. But because she was newly, you know, fully potty trained, um, she'd been, like, what I consider fully day trained at that point for, like, a month maybe. Uh, there was just really no way that it, it was excessive. We'll put it that way. Like, you know, I would not feel bad like if a four or five-year-old, like, had an accident with it because it just bam would hit her all at once and it was just not pleasant we'll put it that way so that really set us back as far as potty training because i had to put pull-ups on her for these like massive four to five time a day blowouts basically there's no other word for it i was like a really horrible baby blowout um if you guys remember those so that did cause a bit of regression because sometimes she would go use the bathroom you know with number one but then she'd get lazy and she'd be like, oh, I'm wearing a pull-up, oh, whatever. So we really regressed. So I was worried after going through all this, but my main focus had to kind of be her getting her tonsils out, whether or not she would regress. She, for the past two days, she started feeling better. So I've been like, okay, buddy, you're feeling better. So we're bye-bye with the pull-ups. We're still going to use them at night because I get them fully day trained and then I take them away at night. So it's taking forever with her, but she's got special circumstances. I know it's probably what every mom says with pull-ups. But anyhow, um, so I said, you're feeling better, and we don't have any of the tummy issues, so we are going to go back to regular underwear. And knock on wood, she's doing pretty good. Um, number ones are basically right back to where they need to be. Um, number two is what we struggled with for the longest time, so I think that's probably going to take us a couple weeks to get back on track there. I was like, we had just got it down packed. Um... 
and you know it is what it is but anyhow it's it's hopefully like riding a bike and it's going better than I anticipated this is my only point there is that she has you know gone right back to at least the number ones she's getting in there and she's going and she knows when she needs to go so um those are my uh thoughts i guess on three-year-olds and tonsillectomies it's going knock on wood pretty good i think she's recovering really well and i'm thankful for that um i really loved the facility that we're at it's really nice i felt like they guided us through every single step made sure we had no questions were really reassuring and i felt comfortable with the doctors the nurses were all great my husband had just had sinus surgery there in january so we actually had the exact same set of nurses and same doctor that my husband had his surgery with. So it was really kind of comforting to me to have all those familiar faces because I was like, oh, we got this, you know? I recognize everyone. So that was really great. So we're gonna go in for our follow-up appointment next week. So I will follow up with a follow-up video after we go to that.